Now, let's take a look at the Gunite 2000 slack adjuster, its applications, and the correct procedure for properly installing a Gunite 2000 slack adjuster. You will note that the Gunite 2000 slack adjuster is specifically designed for use on applications which use air chambers with welded on clevises. Because the clevis is attached to the push rod of the air chamber, the Gunite 2000 is shipped without a clevis. And while the Gunite 2000 slack adjuster looks like a traditional Gunite slack, they are not interchangeable. Do not attempt to install a Gunite 2000 slack adjuster using either a collar lock or threaded clevis from a standard slack adjuster. Attempting to install the Gunite 2000 slack adjuster using either standard clevis configuration will result in improper brake function. The installation procedure for the Gunite 2000 slack adjuster is very simple and straightforward. Follow the same pre-installation procedures that you would use on a standard Gunite slack adjuster. Block the vehicle wheels, cage the spring brake, and remove the existing slack adjuster, making sure to save the washers and retainer ring. Once the old slack adjuster has been removed from the camshaft, apply anti-seize to the camshaft splines. Make sure to properly shim the slack adjuster by placing a washer on either side of the slack adjuster. Replace the retainer ring. Using a 7 16 inch wrench or a socket, rotate the hex extension clockwise until the holes in the slack adjuster are properly aligned with the corresponding holes in the welded clevis. Next, insert the large and small pins in the proper holes and place the appropriate cotter pins into the clevis pins to secure them. Have someone apply the brakes so they travel their full distance to make sure the slack adjuster doesn't interfere with any chassis parts. Installation of the Gunite 2000 does not require a gauge because the correct installation angle is designed into the slack adjuster housing. Once the Gunite 2000 slack adjuster is installed, you must adjust the brakes for proper operation. To accomplish this, use a wrench or socket to rotate the 7 16 inch hex extension clockwise until the brake shoes make contact with the drum. Now, back the slack adjuster off by rotating the 7 16 inch hex extension counterclockwise one half turn. A ratcheting sound will be heard during this part of the procedure. Backing off the slack will require up to 50 pounds of torque. Perform an installation check by taking a power stroke measurement. Using a ruler, measure the distance from the face of the air chamber to the center of the large pin in the clevis. Pump the brake treadle until the air reservoir gauge reads 90 to 100 PSI. Now make a full brake application. Measure from the face of the air chamber to the center of the large pin. The difference between the released measurements and the applied measurement is the power or push rod stroke. This chart shows the maximum allowable push rod stroke based on the chamber size and type. If the push rod stroke exceeds the maximum allowable stroke on the chart, refer to the troubleshooting section of this video or the service manual. If the spring brake was manually caged, uncage it following the manufacturer's safety procedures. The same installation steps should be followed for the front steer and tractor drive axle installation. Once you have installed either the standard Gunite slack adjuster or the Gunite 2000 slack adjuster correctly, it should not require manual readjustment except when relining the brakes. Every three months or 25,000 miles, check brake operation by taking a power stroke reading. To take this reading, allow the brake drums to cool to room temperature. Check for correct stroke following the procedure discussed earlier. Due to different operating conditions, power stroke tests may be necessary at earlier intervals. If the power stroke is more than the allowable maximum stroke, a free stroke measurement should be taken to determine if the slack adjuster is operating properly. Free stroke is the amount of movement of the slack arm required to move the brake shoes against the drum. To perform a free stroke test, the brakes must first be released, then measure from the face of the chamber to the center of the clevis pin. 
Use a lever to pry the slack adjuster until you feel resistance caused by the shoe making contact with the drum. The difference between the released and applied measurement is the free stroke. The free stroke should be 3 eighths to 5 eighths of an inch. If the free stroke is less than 3 eighths of an inch, a dragging brake may occur. Check to see that the manual adjustment procedure was followed correctly. If the free stroke is found to be within the limits, the long power stroke can be attributed to a foundation brake problem. Check for missing or worn brake components, cracked brake drums, or improper lining to drum contact. If the free stroke is greater than the recommended limits, a function test of the slack adjuster should be performed. Using a torque wrench, rotate the adjusting hex counterclockwise. You should have a minimum of 15 foot-pounds of torque. If the hex extension did not rotate, or if there is less than 15 foot-pounds of torque required to rotate the hex in the counterclockwise direction, the slack adjuster must be replaced. If immediate replacement is not possible, proper brake adjustment must be maintained by manual adjustment. To test the function of the slack adjuster, rotate the hex extension three quarters of a turn counterclockwise. A ratcheting sound will be heard. Mark the adjusting hex with a piece of chalk. Apply and release the brake several times and watch for the mark to rotate clockwise. The adjustment is intentionally made in small increments, so it will take several cycles to bring the slack adjuster within the stroke limit shown in the chart. If rotation does not occur, the slack adjuster should be replaced. Remember, slack adjusters cannot compensate for problems and deficiencies in the foundation braking system. So, if there seems to be a problem in the brake system, thoroughly check each of the brake components. Every six months or 50,000 miles, the slack adjuster should be lubricated. A grease fitting is provided to allow fresh lubrication during normal chassis service. With a conventional grease gun, fill the inside of the slack adjuster until grease flows from the drilled and grooved worm wheel, allowing grease to get between the S-cam and worm wheel for reduced wear and easy removal. The gunite slack adjuster does not require special lubricant or greases. Simply lubricate the slack using regular chassis lube recommended for your area and climate. Aside from greasing, the only other maintenance required on the slack adjuster is to inspect the unit for damage. You should pay close attention to excessive wear on the attaching hardware such as clevis pins, old style quick connect clevises, and bushings. Excessive wear on the large clevis pin or bushing will increase lining to drum clearance. While the Gunite Automatic Slack Adjuster offers you superior performance, no slack adjuster can compensate for problems caused by worn or damaged foundation brake parts. Regular inspection of all brake system components should be part of every fleet's preventive maintenance program. Drums which show signs of excessive wear or Martin sight, excessive heat checking, or other damage caused by abuse should be replaced as soon as possible to avoid further deterioration of brake system performance. Drums which show signs of severe abuse such as cracking must be replaced immediately. S-cams and bushings must be inspected for damage or excessive wear to the cam surface, bushing areas, or damage to the splines. If worn or damaged, they should be replaced as soon as possible. Check brake shoes to make sure they are not out of arc. Inspect the linings for excessive wear or damage. Also, be sure to check the condition of the return springs. If they are worn or damaged, replace them immediately. Check the condition of the S-cam rollers for excessive wear, corrosion, or damage. Check to make sure that the anchor pins and bushings are not worn or broken. Proper and thorough maintenance of your brake system will extend the life of brake components and help maintain efficient, balanced braking. If you need any additional information or service manuals, contact Gunite at 1-800-677-3786 or visit our website at www.gunite.com.